If you're making vertical reels for TikTok, Instagram reels, or YouTube shorts, there's no reason it can't be just as precisely edited as a Netflix show. And today I'm gonna to show you how to get started doing that in Final Cut Pro. Also, this video is brought to you by Artlist. More about them later. For the sake of this video, let's assume that we're shooting on our iPhones. And I'm gonna edit this reel that I just did for my wife last night, actually, of her nails getting done, very simple and I'm just gonna select them all and airdrop them to myself. And the first couple steps are in the finder before we move into Final Cut. I'm gonna select all of those downloaded videos, create a new folder and call it, I don't know, whatever the project's gonna be, so Anya's Nails. Then inside of that Anya's Nails, I'm gonna create a new folder and call it Media. And this Media folder might have videos or images, in this case, just videos, but it could have anything in there. So now I'm gonna head over to Final Cut Pro and create a new library. And then I can save it inside that Anya's Nails folder. And all this is moving too fast. At the end of the video, I'll have links to all my Final Cut videos that'll go even more in depth on some of these steps because I know I can move a little quickly. Something to point out along the way, I do create a library for each project that I'm working on. So here was one from Q Gardens, another from Las Vegas. Now inside this library, we're gonna create a new project. Now we're gonna to have to click use custom settings here because we're not doing things totally standard. This isn't a horizontal video, it's a vertical video. This is basically the whole key step here. Uh, Final Cut recently introduced these vertical templates that weren't there before. And something important to notice, it often defaults to 720 by 1280. I don't know why, like not even 1080. You want it to at least be 1080 by 1920. That's proper HD. And 29.97 is the most common frame rate um, if you're shooting on a phone. So I'm gonna stick with that. You're gonna have to look at your footage to check what you actually did. But if you don't know what frame rate you shot it, it's probably 29.97. Okay, things are taking a little more shape. Let's go to the next step and we'll go to File, Import, Media. In the media folder, we've got all of the videos and I'm just gonna shift click to select all of them because we're gonna import everything at once. And I wanna draw attention to this option on the right here. It says copy to library or leave files in place. If you've watched my other Final Cut videos, I like to leave files in place for more advanced edits, but since we're doing the simple one here, I'm gonna say copy to library. This is the default of what Final Cut typically does. So we're, we're gonna use that, not worry about any of these other options here and just say import selected. And now let's go back to Finder, take another look at what happened here so there's no confusion. Here's all that original media. This is where those videos are that we started with. Now, if we click on the library, you'll see the size of it has grown. It's 440 megabytes now. That's because it copied all of these inside of this library. So I can actually delete that folder. And if I go back in my project, I can confirm all the videos are still there because there's a copy that Final Cut made and it's in that library. All these different interface areas can be resized so that we can do a little bit of custom scaling. I'd really like to see Final Cut let me make this as big as I want, like put the vertical video on the right of the screen. You can't do that right now. All you can really do is stretch it up and down because you want to see as much of it as possible. So all I have to do is select all of them and I'm just going to drag them down here into the timeline. And to make this the easiest edit in history, now that all this is in here, I know that it just needs to kind of run sequentially. All I'm going to do is say Command A, so I select all, I'm gonna right click and say change duration to one second. And just like that, my timeline's gone down from seven minutes to uh, 23 seconds. And if you're editing for social media, that's probably more realistic. Now, before I hit play, I know that the audio in this is not useful, so I'm gonna select all these clips. I can click and drag. And over here in the inspector, you'll see a little audio icon. If you hover over, it'll tell you what they do. This is the audio inspector. I'm gonna click on it and turn the volume all the way down so none of these clips have volume anymore. You see that at the bottom, that there was a little waveform. If I turn them back up, if I turn them down, that waveform is gone, so there's no audio, and now I can just play. So if you've got a montage, just clips that go one after the other, this is a really quick way to get them in order, but sometimes you need to select a certain part of it. So for example, these two last clips, they're not really showing what she intended, so I'm gonna click on the clip, drag it out, and now I can see the whole thing. Do you see how I did that? Either side has little handles that turn yellow, and red as you click on them, and then you know that you're grabbing onto the edges of the clip. Red means you can't drag it any further in that direction. Yellow means it's got some room to move. And if you're seeing something different, right now I'm on the default select tool. The shortcut for that is A, and other tools will behave differently, but this is the one that we use most often. So you can hit A to make sure you're using the same default tool that I am. I'm gonna expand this out. And so what I'm looking for is where Anya shows off her nails here, just like that. Now I can just click on the right, drag that shorter, Find where the clip begins, drag that over here. 
and I've got two different takes of this, but I don't need the second one now. I chose this take. And now I've got a full sequence. Like this could be the real just like this. But of, of course, we're gonna take it a little bit further. Let's say I wanna change which part of the clip I'm viewing. I press Command plus to zoom in. Obviously Command minus would zoom out. And in our tools, instead of the default select, I'm gonna use trim. Now what this does is as I click in the middle of the clip, it's moving which part of the clip is being used. So I can just kind of move it around until it's using the part that I want. These are incredibly short. <laughs> Here's a better example. So in this one, you can't even see the nail being painted. So I'm gonna move it over until we do. Now let's watch it. Great, half a second of a nail being painted. Now let's say you don't wanna use one of these clips. Great chance to show off the magnetic timeline that you've heard so much about. This is what a lot of people love about Final Cut. I can just click on a clip, press delete, and they snap together like magnets. I'm gonna undo, redo, so you see what's happening there? It's kinda of got gravity towards the left so that it always wants to close any spaces that you create in the timeline. So if I move back to the start and I hit play, which is also spacebar, I can see, well, great. I've got a reel of some nails being done. Cool. <laughs> now I know you might be really invested in this nail video we made, but let's move to an even more exciting one. This is one we just did in Las Vegas. It's a lot more exciting to watch, but it's still missing something important and that's music. And I know just where to find it. And go straight to artlist.io where I've been getting stock music for years now because it's not just music. They have lots of sound effects too. So let me show you just how quick and easy it is to find a song. I can say video theme. I already know that this is a travel video. And now it gives me a pre-selected list of great travel songs. I can narrow it down by things like the amount of energy that I want it to have. Let's say it's medium fast. And then I can also add a genre. Let's say this is gonna be a pop song. Once I find something that I like the vibe of it, I can also click this button over here and it's gonna recommend more similar songs that have the same tone or the same speed. Once I found one I like, I can just click download MP3 to keep it small. I'm gonna put it in my media folder and I can actually just drag it into Final Cut. It's another way to add things. I'm gonna put it below all of the video. And I'll show you how easy it is to edit the video to the beat. But first, a few more things about Artlist. They've got some great licensing options that get you access to unlimited music and sound effects, starting with the personal plan at $9.99. Or if you need to cover more uses like broadcast TV, paid ads, or any online platform, you can get the unlimited plan for $16.60 a month, which really gives you this confidence when you're doing commercial videos that your client is gonna get exactly what they're expecting. And now's a great time to sign up because they've got this all in pack that just provides a ton of different features like sound effects, visual effects. In fact, I'm gonna drop in one of their included film mats that is in the bundle. You can also add their film grain and also these color preset LUTs. And all of a sudden my video looks a lot more like film. So you've got a worldwide license at a great price and Artlist is always adding more songs and more musicians so you can stay ahead of the trends. So sign up now because it lets them know you heard about Artlist on this channel. And it also gets you that all in pack with the presets and the sound effects and the VFX. And then you will also get two months free at Artlist. Again, link is in the description. Thanks again to Artlist. So now if I hit play, we get all of it. Okay, but I wanna time this a little better. So I'm gonna cut some of the beginning of this video off and bring this way forward so that the drop happens right as that first shot ends. Another thing you can see happening is that it's snapping between the clips. That's this thing over here. See, snap, it'll snap from clip to clip and I can drag this over. And now we should get a nice perfectly timed drop. Perfect. When you wanna end the song, you can click on any segment and press Command B. And now it is cut those in half. It's a blade. B is for blade. Here is the blade tool as well. Now using my default select tool, I'm gonna to select the end of that and delete it. And now the song is the length of the video. I'm just gonna drag out that end and it will snap to the very last moment. And now that we've got music in here, I'm just gonna show you how easy it is to edit the beat without even listening to the song. I know that these yellow peaks are when the beat is hitting, so I can just click and drag each clip to line up with that. If I play it all back, I've got 17 epic seconds of our recent trip to Las Vegas. All right, now the last step, we're gonna export this. All we gotta do is go to File, Share, Export, just wanna double check down here that the settings are what you expected, 1080 by 1920 and 29.97 frames per second. Also up here, the only thing you wanna change is go over to settings and this is where you set the format. I don't know what it defaults to, but let's choose a, a useful one. I often use Apple devices and go to better encoding H.264 and make sure that the resolution is turned up as high as it can be. That's all you gotta do. 
hit next, and I'm just gonna save it into this folder with all my other reels. If you wanna watch the progress, you can click this little circle up here and see it export. We covered the simplest way to edit it, but I know I can talk a little fast, so I'm gonna go through it all again and throw in a few more pro tips, this time with a reel of my photography and videos that we shot on another recent trip. It was all shot on film, actually. This is the Yashica T4 Super D. The first steps are similar. I'm gonna go on my phone and find all of the images I wanna use, airdrop them to my computer, create a new folder called Euro Trip Film. Inside, I'll make a media folder. This time I'll have photos, videos, and audio, and you'll see why I'm making manual folders in two seconds, because I'm gonna organize it myself this time. I'll select and drag all the video and all the photos. And I'll go back to our list, use some of the playlists I've already created, and just download a song and add it to the audio folder. Now I'm all organized in the Finder. Time to get back to Final Cut. I'm gonna create File, New, Library. Put it in Euro Trip Film and give it whatever name you want. And now I'm gonna import things a little bit differently. First, I'm gonna just change the default preference of this by going to Preferences, and I wanna leave files in place. This is how I do things for YouTube and any more important, serious editing project. And then I'm gonna to go to File, Import Media again. If I open up Euro Trip Film, here's all the photos and videos that I plan to use. Now I'm gonna press Command A to select all those files and look over here to the right, we're gonna use leave files in place. I already organized them, I know where they are, I don't need to copy them to my library, and I'm gonna say import all. Again, ignoring everything over here on the right. And I don't have a project yet, so I'm gonna create a new project. Again, I'll use that vertical template. This time I'm gonna make it 4K, which is 2160 by 3840, same frame rate. I'm gonna quickly name it here again. This is the one that actually changes the export name of your final file, the project name, so this one kind of matters a little more, I guess, and click OK. So now I've got a timeline at the bottom. Over here on my left in the browser, I have all of my photos and videos. And I still want this to be really quick, but I want to be a little more precise about what I add in. So I'm gonna zoom in and see what these clips look like. Instead of just dragging them all in, I'm gonna select my favorite section from each clip. And it's gonna kind of play out like a vlog. So I'll start with this video of traveling from Calgary to London and a concept that's in all video editing software. So this is transferable. You can press I and that's gonna select an in point. See how the selection moved, this little yellow selector. And at the end of the part I wanna use, I'm gonna press O, and that's in and out. And now you see this is what is selected in the clip. I can click and drag this down to the timeline. I also have some buttons here that will help move it down to the timeline if I want, but uh, for now let's just click and drag to keep it simple. And you can see I'm really quickly just skimming over these videos, selecting my favorite parts and dragging them down. I'm trying not to be too picky about it. I can refine it later, but also the point of reels or TikToks are to post a lot of them. So just think quickly, follow your instincts, just choose the best part of the clip as soon as you see it. Again, I'm not gonna use any of this audio, so I will command A to select all. I'm gonna turn the volume all the way down and then go into my audio keyword. And here is that artless song and I can just drag it down below, command minus to zoom out of my timeline, grab the end of it, make it the same length as the clips. Since I know I've selected the best parts and I know I want this video to move fast, I can select all again and say, right click, change duration, and I can make this 15 frames. Now each one's only gonna be half a second because I know I want this one to move quickly. I also noticed that I put two clips in the wrong place. This is loading film into the camera. That should be near the beginning. So I can just click and drag and the magnetic timeline will help me out. And the other thing I want in this reel is to show the results from these video clips. So now I just kind of need to match them all up, photos to the videos that they align with. So first I know I want those cactuses, there they are. I'm just gonna drag it down, drop it in right after the digital cactus, and there it is, there's the result. Grab the side, make it shorter. And now you notice there's black bars on the top and bottom. Maybe I want those, maybe I don't. I'm gonna say that I don't. And over here in the inspector, if you scroll to the bottom, there's spatial conform. Right now it's set to fit. I'm gonna switch that to fill. It's gonna make the image the same size as the frame. So now I've got no more black bars. After I've finished adding all the clips in, I'm gonna select them all again. And let's do that right click, make everything half a second, again, including the photos. And also while they're selected, I'm gonna click this little film icon over here in the inspector, scroll down to the bottom, Spatial conform, we're gonna fill so they all are full frame. And after I adjust the timing a little bit more, this is my video. Now, 
Now, if you're confused about editing the Instagram Reels, TikTok, or any other vertical video you're working on, don't worry, I've got more Final Cut Pro tutorials that go even more in depth. So click on that video, watch it next, and I'll see you in the next one.